Welcome to Gargar Knits. My name's Anita and I live in South Wales in the UK and you can find me on Instagram and Ravelry as Anita Bowl and show notes can be found in the description box below. I hope you've had a nice few weeks since we spoke last. We've had quite a busy September in the Gargar household. Jodie returned to work after her maternity leave this month and Harry started year two and Jack has started nursery as his mum's now in work. Jodie also celebrated her 30th birthday. My sister-in-law Janine had a birthday and I've also attended Malvern show where I shall show you some photos of that at the end of this episode. I have some knitting to show you, some sewing and some acquisitions. Also, the I need to draw for the winner of the Country Garden collection knitting patterns from Ellie of Craft House Magic. And also I have a little DIY project that I finished also, that I finished too. So let's get on with the knitting. At the moment, I am mainly, well, I am completely only knitting on my Bonnie sweater from Kim Hargreaves because I want to get this finished because I have another project I need to do ready for Christmas jumper day. So I have now finished the front and back of the sweater and um, they're both exactly the same. Just got a little bit of moss stitch at the bottom and then you knit all the way up and you have this nice eyelet detail on the um, decreases and um, and that's that really. I'm working on the sleeve. I've just got a couple more rows to do one more increase and then I think I need to knit up straight a little way and then do the decreases. So if you can see here the line here, I did have a bit of a problem with one of the balls of yarn in that it went very thick and thin. Now it only seems to have happened with one ball, but I cut the pieces out to show you. So some pieces I was I was knitting with went that thick and then that's sort of the normal and then it would go so thin oh just to nothing really thin so you had that thinness in one section and that thickness in another and you wouldn't really know it was coming and then you'd be halfway through one of the sleeve rows and then it would go all thick and thin and then I'd have to take all the stitches back to the beginning of the row and cut out the bits, the thick bits. But I have to say it was only in the one ball. And um, so hopefully when I wash and block that, that won't be too noticeable. And um, I thought I'd take most of it out, but I think there's just one little bit he along here that's a little bit thinner. I could just, I could just see it through the back. It looks a bit thinner. So anyway, I'm working on that and I'm quite enjoying it. I don't really have much knitting time like most people because I work full time. By the time I come home and make tea and clear up and walk the dog, I only really have an hour or an hour and a half in the evening. I'm not the fastest of knitters, but I am trying to get that done. Now I'm, I think this week I'll probably finish the one sleeve and then obviously I'll do the next sleeve. I don't it doesn't worry me doing two sleeves they, it, and it doesn't seem, although I'm increasing, I, you increase every eight rows, it doesn't seem that they're getting loads and loads of stitches. So hopefully I'll have that finished in the next few weeks so I can get start on my Christmas jumper. That's really my only knitting project at the moment, although I do have one in the pipeline, which is the Country Garden Beret that the patterns that I'm giving away today, I also was gifted from Ellie the three patterns and I want to do the berry because like I said last episode, I've only done one berry before and that was a crocheted one. 
and it didn't fit. So I'm looking forward to doing this one. Now I have started it once already. Um, I think it's okay to say because it's a pay for pattern but you have to do a provisional crochet cast on and I've not done that before so I had to look that up and then I was going to use this yarn. It's a bit hard to show. It's a bit of a dark day today. This yarn, uh, which is Cartref yarn in the colourway Glow, um, and I started knitting with it, but I think it's a bit too rustic for a beret next to my head. Like I was saying last time, I don't like anything on my forehead that's scratchy. I think this is a bit too robust. I think this would be really nice for mittens, but not necessarily a beret. So I had started on this, but I, I pulled it all back and I purchased a skein of Ellie's yarn and this is and this is the Dress You Up colourway and it's DK also this is DK and it's this thick and the Cartref yarn is also listed as DK Let's see if I can put them together on my finger and the Cartref yarn does look quite a lot thicker than, than this one, so um, I definitely have to swatch for anything I make with the Cartref yarn. So the plan is to cake this up and start on my beret. And I do want to finish my sweater, but I think I will start this as well. And I chose this colourway because I have a dusky pink coat that I bought last year uh, for winter and I think the pink speckles in there will go really nicely with it and it's a, just a delicate pattern and on the yarn and there's also a delicate pattern on the beret so I think they'll go perfectly together. So that eases us nicely into the giveaway. I thought I'd do it now after I said that that's my next project that I plan to do. For those of you who entered, thank you very much. And I have put all the entries in the beret that I told you about, the crocheted one that doesn't fit. So I put them all in here and I shall choose one out now. And uh, this is for the Country Garden collection, which is a beret, a cowl and mitts knitted in DK. And the winner is Luna Lucinda. Hi, Anita. I'm really enjoying your podcast. I've watched every episode these last few weeks. I think if I won the patterns, I'd knit the cowl first. I love Pembrokeshire. Can't wait for West Wales wool show in a few weeks. So well done, Lucinda. Um, so the patterns are coming from Ellie. If you are on Ravelry, could you please, uh, in the down bar below, put your Ravelry name and um, I can then ask Ellie to send the patterns directly to you on Ravelry. But if you're not, could you give me your email address? Now, you probably wouldn't want to put that down below. So if you're on Instagram um, and you follow me, I'm Anita Bowl. If you could private... If you could private message me on there, then with your email address and I can give that to Ellie and she could send you the patterns that way. If you're not on either of those platforms, which I'm sure you will be, if you just let me know you're not and I'll think of another way of getting in touch with you. So well done, Lucinda. And um, I hope you do knit the cowl. So that's lovely. Let's move on to sewing. I have a finished object. Meet Beatrice. She is my latest Luna Lapin. Um, and I knitted her, oh, knitted? I sewed her to keep my first Luna Lapin, Arthur, company. So this is, here they are, nice little couple. And, um, I'm very happy with her. She was meant to be for Jack because Arthur is Harry's Luna Lapin. But um, when he sees her, he tries to eat her. So I think they're not really a toy. They're a little bit too delicate for a toy because Arthur gets 
gets a bit of rough treatment from Harry and sometimes his the stitches on his leg come undone a little bit. I've already had to repair him once and I can see there's a little bit of a, a hole coming again. But I was thinking it might look quite cute if I had some um, very fine cotton fabric and sew little patches on with some little stitches that you could see. I thought he might actually look quite cute like that. Now he is stuffed with proper toy stuffing and I know he's been cuddled a lot by Harry but he is a bit, he's turning out to be a bit floppy now and not really um, very firm and I did pack him in quite firmly with the with the stuffing. Now Beatrice on the other hand is stuffed with dog bed foam, the well not foam, the stuffing that you would stuff dog beds with because my friend made a Luna lap in and that's all she could get her hands on and she gave some to me because I ran out and I have to say she's still cuddly but she's a lot firmer and obviously it meets all the safety regulations because the dog beds would be in the house as well so um, I recommend getting some of that. So anyway she's nice and firm so I've got the two of them now and I need to make them some clothes. My next sewing project is what I'm wearing. Now this I have refashioned because I originally made it as this pattern, the Quick Sew K3954 and I did that version but with long sleeves. Um, and it's a really nice pattern it's nice and easy to sew up but it didn't suit me at all the neck was too gapy and because it's just a swing top and i'm hair shaped it wasn't good and i made it in march and i haven't worn it at all so i was trying to think what i could do with it because i really like the fabric i got the fabric from fabrics galore when i went to the nec in birmingham last november for craft show and um, I was a bit disappointed that I wouldn't be wearing it so I decided I would try and mix it up a bit so I got the pattern pieces out for the Frankie baseball t-shirt from Tilly and the Buttons and I tried to um, reshape the neckline a little bit I liked the sleeves so I kept those but I used the side seams of the Frankie to shape the um, top a little bit better and then I'll just stand back a bit further I then try to do the curve of the baseball top so it's not ideal I'm sorry I've got my old jogging bottoms on I've been out walking Charlie this morning um, and this neck is a little bit square actually if I put, wear it the top the other way around this bit fits very nicely on my back but it's, it's too low so um, I did I didn't do the Frankie ribbed neckline I did the neckline the same as it showed you in here with some bias binding I put the bias binding around but unfortunately the join of the bias binding is in the front but it doesn't matter I'm, I mean it's just a bit of a botch job but I will wear this and it's quite cozy and um, at least I'm going to wear it and I wouldn't have worn it if I'd left it as the other top and I didn't know anyone who it would fit nicely either so I would have given it away but I refashioned it instead so I'm quite pleased with myself with that because I will wear this one now. My next sewing project is one that I saw on the sewing bee and then um, if you follow the fold line uh, YouTube channel when the sewing bee was on the next day they always uploaded an episode where they had tried to source the patterns or that the sewing bee had used or ones that you could use to make the, the different items that they made and um, this was on the uh, the dog coat week when they all had to, I think they made them out of tents, old tents or something like that, but they made dog coats. And one of the um, pattern suggestions on the fold line was this, the Simplicity K277. And I'm going to do um, this 
version 10, which for, for Charlie, because she's an old English sheepdog, and I thought that was really cute. And you never get dog coats for big dogs. They're always for little dogs. And I know lots of people don't think you should put coats and things on, on dogs, and then lots of people do. So, I mean, obviously it's personal choice, but I thought that would be nice because if you've been following along with this channel for a while, you know that Charlie has got arthritis and her legs are bad, and we do try to keep her coat quite short uh, just for practicality. And um, I just thought it would be nice to make her a coat. And so I picked this pattern up recently because it was in the So Essential sale. They had 20% off all their Simplicity patterns. So I saw that as a sign that I should buy it. So I bought the pattern and that came really quickly. And then I thought rather than buy fabric, because sometimes it's quite expensive to just buy a couple of meters of fabric. And since it's just a bit of a fun thing and it's for the dog, I thought I'd have a look to see if I could think of a different way of obtaining the material to make it. So I found this pet blanket in Home Bargains and it was £3.50 and um, if you could see there, look there's little paws all along the top and then snowflakes. So I thought that was nice, it's going to be fairly, th well it's not actually that thin, so this is going to be the, the outer fabric and then in Cardiff, I went into Primark and or Primark, 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 whatever you call it, and I bought these brushed cotton pillowcases. Now there's two here, so there's quite a lot of fabric on those for the lining. So I've got two of those, um, and that's them here, and they were three pounds for two. So I might only use one. I might use two. I don't know. So that's not too bad really for £6.50, well not £6.50 because I also had to buy some of this hook and loop tape. Um, I've not used that before so you need to use a little bit of that. I think that was £2.99 online. Um, I think I bought it through eBay but it was a ladies store who does cross stitch and sewing threads and things so I'll put in the description box below I'll put the um, her details so if you want to find anything from her you can have a little look. So I'm hoping to finish that off in the next week or so because there's only three pattern pieces and I've already cut the pieces out so I just need to cut the fabrics out so three of the outer and three of the lining and hopefully sew that up soon because Charlie had a haircut yesterday and the weather has turned colder so she um if you follow on if you follow me on Instagram you might have seen that she's been lying on the settee under a crocheted blanket looking very sorry for herself. On to my DIY section. So last week I showed you my little rocking commode for Arthur. And here it is. I have sprayed it using the plastic coat. It's the plastic coat fast dry project enamel. One whole can on this tiny project and it didn't even coat it all. Um, so I was a little bit disappointed at first and I have got another can of this spray. And I have to say it goes everywhere. I did spray it outside so that was one good thing. But I think I'm just going to leave it like this and I might even sand a few little bits down a little bit more and give it the sort of distressed look um, because I think maybe even if I'd use the next can it wouldn't necessarily cover evenly either so I might as well just sand a few bits down and make it look like it's meant to be like this and I haven't made any cushions properly for it yet but I'm just putting at the moment I just put some of my lavender cushions in it and put one in the front, one on the seat and one on the back and they smell nice as well so that's great and then let's put Arthur and he sits in there nicely. Um, so I've got to make the armchair now for Beatrice so they can sit together either side of the fire side. I follow Davina of Little Workroom Crafts podcast. She's got a lovely podcast and she can knit and crochet, sew, she can do patchwork and 
um, embroidery and she's always every episode there's something on there that I want to follow along or, or have a go at and she recently reached 100 subscribers as so she's quite new and she hasn't been going for very long and she's way over that now but um, she was doing a giveaway as a thank you and I entered and I won and she was so generous because these are all things that she's made herself and um, she sent me a lovely package which came I pretty much the next day or the day after that and I was so excited to open it it was beautifully wrapped and she has made two DPN cases with these little snails on and the snaps and it's all light blue fleecy lined inside so there's two of those she made an over the arm knitting bag that you slip on there and then you can put um, a skein of yarn and, and I think knit socks on the go. So sweet, I love that. Look at the little hedgehogs. And her sewing is really, really neat and it's a lovely spotty design inside. If I unpop it, you can see how nice it is. Look at that, beautiful. And then she's got her little workroom crafts stamp. I don't know if you can see that. I think that must be her new stamp that she's using that she showed in her podcast. I think her last episode. And then she sent a large project bag and she's done some of the English paper pattern piecing embroidery on that. And that's the latest thing that I want to have a go at because that's really, really nice. I like that. I've never tried it and I am going to the NEC in Birmingham for the craft fair, again, the Christmas craft fair again at the beginning of November. I'm hoping they'll have some um, quilting stands and I'm going to definitely get the Perspex template and some of the paper cut, the ready cut paper pieces to have a go at doing that. And then that's all fully lined as well. I mean, she could have split this up into two prizes because she could put a bag in each and a DPN case, but I got them all out. I, I just can't believe how generous she, she's been. And then also these stitch markers. I'm not sure if she made them herself, but I'm thinking she probably did because they're on her lovely card here with her stamp on. And she also gave me some chocolates, which I've eaten and some tea bags some herbal teas which I have given to my friend I took we um two of my friends come over my house on a Thursday evening we have a bit of a craft club so I'm going to give them each one of these as well because it's nice to share other people's generosity isn't it and pass it along as so I know that they like these they they thought I when I told them I'd won this giveaway and I showed them um to Vina's podcast on the telly because you can cast it to the telly they uh, couldn't believe how how lovely the things were that she made and i said i promised them they could have one of these each and i gave one of the ladies the tea bags as well because i call them dodgy tea because i'm a, i'm a normal tea drinker and um, i do try some of the herbal and fruit teas but my friend particularly likes them so she enjoyed those and also davina gave me these um, all these yarns are leftovers from projects that she's made and she gave me a lovely card as well so I've kept them in here because we are doing magic knot balls and Davina has knitted some really nice sweaters from her magic knot ball and she did the um, flax light and it just looks really nice so I, I copied her basically well I had did have a magic knot ball and I was making a crochet blanket which I'm enjoying but I thought a jumper out of it would be really nice it's stripy and all multicolored and anyone who knows me knows that I like all different colors and um I just think it would be really nice so Davina sent me some of her um leftovers to add to my magic knot ball and I've sent her some back so she can have a few of mine in her sweater and I can have a few of hers in my sweater which will have to be done after my Christmas jumper. So thank you again Davina, it was so generous of you and if you haven't watched her podcast please go and take a look. It's called Little Workroom Crafts and you won't be disappointed. All that's
that's left now are my out and about and um, as I said at the beginning of the episode my friend and I went to Malvern show this weekend it's, it's on um, let's have a look in my notes I don't even know what day we're on it's on the 28th and 29th of September so the Saturday and Sunday it's always on towards the end of September because it's the autumn show and it's a lovely show we go on a coach trip and um, it's just a really nice day out but this year it was we were a little bit concerned because of the weather forecast wasn't brilliant but we were quite lucky it was quite overcast and it did spot to rain a few times but generally we were quite lucky and then when we got on the bus at six o'clock and started to pull away it absolutely hammered down for the rest of the evening as far as I'm aware so we were very very lucky uh, the only problem with the weather was that the show was very very busy and last year it didn't we had lovely weather last year and it didn't seem as busy but I think it's because this year people had looked at the forecast and the weather forecast for today so the Sunday was atrocious it just raining all day and I think so everyone decided that they were all going to go on the Saturday so it did mean that I couldn't photograph or film as many things as I had wanted to because I couldn't quite get to them or people got in the way I mean obviously <laughs> it's the, the show wasn't just for me but um, so anyway I've done the best that I can and I put a few photos at the end just so you can sort of get a little idea of the show and if ever you get a chance to go to Malvern Autumn Show I highly recommend it and um, congratulations again to Lucinda, Lucinda for winning the pattern so don't forget to try and get a message to me somehow and we'll sort out how the patterns can be sent to you um, if you've liked the episode please subscribe if you haven't already and thank you if you are already a regular watcher or viewer I should say um, and thank you if you're new and you've taken the time to watch to the end Please uh, remember, if you do subscribe, to click the notification button so you'll know when my next episode is. Um, take care and I shall see you all soon. Well, I shall see you all hopefully at the end of October. Bye for now.